Oi! Ah. What are you doing? I was just smashing electronic components so I could identify them by their insides. You know you could just Google the part number and that would tell you all the information you need to know. Or you could try one of these new component testers off eBay, which reminds me, I need to test this. So in case you're not familiar with these component testers, there's heaps of them all over eBay and AliExpress and the like. Uh, very cheap, normally under 20 US dollars. And their job is to identify different types of electronic components. So it could be light emitting diodes, silicon diodes, capacitors, resistors, MOSFETs, transistors and so on. And they tell you uh, the pinout of those components and give you a little bit of information depending on the type of component. So uh, that gets you up to speed on what this does. Let's get into the review. So I opted in for the acrylic case to house the component tester in and I just wanted to quickly mention there are a couple problems with it that I've found. It does fit together quite well but the, uh, the stem isn't centred in the hole so the knob can't go on and apparently this was designed for people with uh, pencils for fingers because I'm not quite sure how I'm supposed to push the lever down all the way through that uh, little slot there so I need to make that bigger. Another design flaw in my opinion is the fact that they've got this piece of acrylic that only partially covers the rear of the PCB and if we put a 9 volt battery in there uh, with its metal housing it, it could potentially short out the connections on the back of the PCB um, and the simplest way around this I figure is to wrap the battery in some electrical tape. It's not elegant of course and there are more permanent solutions but this will do for now. So I've got my acrylic case fully enclosed and modified so I can push the lever down now and I've chosen to power it from a 9 volt battery however you can also power it from the DC jack on the side there. Now in the video's description I'll put a link to download the PDF manual for this unit. Uh, it's only four pages but it does include some important information you should know about. Um, I won't read it in the video because you can read it in your own leisure. The only thing I'll mention is uh, this is how the socket's configured. So uh, they say here tef transistor tester have three test points, one, two and three, within the test socket. And this is how they're arranged. So uh, the red box is all uh, test point one, then you've got a couple terminals in the middle that are test point two, and then you've got another few test sockets on the right in the blue box. Now why that's important is if you're testing a component, let's say a capacitor, uh, if you configured it so that the capacitor is across the terminals like this, um, it won't work because it has, the capacitor or the component you're testing has to be across more than just one test point. So you could go between red and blue or yellow and blue and so on. So before we use it to measure our first component we do have to go through a calibration and what we need to do is short pins 1, 2 and 3 together. So I've just made up this uh, little wire, so there's pin 1, pin 2 and pin 3, so they're all shorted together. And for the test you also need a capacitor bigger than, or sorry, you need a capacitor rated higher than 100 nanofarads. Uh, I've got a 100 microfarad capacitor right here to test. So I'm going to long press the rotary encoder and I'm going to scroll through the menu until we get self test and then I'm going to press so it's got saying short probes so it'll tell us when to remove it. Isolate probes, so now we can remove the jumper. So now it's asking us to install the capacitor. And it's asking, it to, asking us to install it between pin 1 and 3. 
and test is ended. So now I can just remove the capacitor and uh, that's the calibration finished. Now before we get into measuring our first components I just wanted to mention something regarding accuracy. So this is what the manual says. You should not expect very good accuracy of measurement results, especially the ESR and inductance. So if this isn't very accurate, why buy it in the first place? Well, although it might not give great accuracy, what it does do is it identifies components for us. So you might have, like me, a, a drawer of miscellaneous components, and some of them can be quite tiny, like this diode, and uh, the numbers can be non-existent or very hard to read. Whereas if you have a component tester like this, it'll tell you what you need to know about that component. So I'll zoom in here, and the first thing I'm going to test is uh, IRF9510, and it's a MOSFET. So I'm going to install it in pins 1, 2, and 3, and then just short press the button, and it will test the component for us. There out, it's telling us it's a MOSFET, and then it's uh, also in the corner, it's telling us the pinout configuration, and then a bit of information on the screen there also. Let's try next a resistor. This is a 6.8K 5 tolerance resistor, uh, sorry, 5% tolerance resistor. There we go, it's telling us it's a resistor and uh, saying it's uh, 6,762 ohms. Very nice. Let's try a uh, diode next. This is a 1N4001. Yeah, it's telling us the forward voltage and it's got a slight capacitance of 12 picofarads apparently. Next we'll try a light emitting diode. I can see it's uh, even flashing the LED there. Tells us the forward voltage and uh, apparently it's got some capacitance as well. And uh, this is a BJT transistor. And there we go, BJT NPN, telling us the pinout again and then some information about it. And then lastly I've got a 100 microfarad uh, polarized electrolytic capacitor, which I'll try next. There we are, so it's telling us it's a 101 microfarads uh, equivalent series resistance, which we shouldn't take as gospel, we should take it with a pinch of salt, voltage loss, etc. So, very cool. So the only component category we really haven't covered is an inductor and I don't have any small inductors on hand like you'd see on a circuit board or PCB but I do have this rather large choke, it's uh, rated for 10 Henry so it is a little bit ridiculous testing something like a 10 Henry choke on this uh, poor little component tester but hey we're all here for experimenting, can't blow up, let's give it a whirl and see what it says. Okay, so it's telling us it's uh, both a resistor and it's got inductance, uh, 173 ohms, and it's actually not too far off when it comes to inductance. It's rated for 10 Henry, as you can see, and it's saying it's 8.85. So, uh, like the manual stated, the results aren't gospel, but um, they're in the, in the right ballpark. So, besides component identification, uh, there's actually three other things this can do. Uh, you'll notice it's got three blue headers and uh, each one does a separate job. This one down here um, is a signal function generator as well as a PWM generator. Uh, the one over here on the right measures voltage and the one up here measures frequency. So I've got my scope meter here and I'm going to long press to go into the menu and then I'm going to go down to frequency, or sorry, F generator. That's what we want. Let's try a 100 hertz 
square wave. So I'll put my scope meter probes across it. And we can see there, not bad accuracy either, spot on 100 hertz. It's also right on the money at 250 hertz as well. So now I want to try out the PWM function. So I've tuned my scope meter as best I can to display what's going on uh, with the waveform. Um, it does let me down a little bit in some of the finer detail. I do need an oscilloscope, but that's a future investment for later. So it starts off at 50% uh, as you can see and then I'll just reduce the duty cycle and then we can see on my scope meter the, the waveform changing then if I go the other way let's try 81% duty cycle you can see that function is working just fine so the last thing I'm going to test in this video is the uh, voltage function now I've got my lab bench power supply uh, set to 5 volts and my Bryman meter is reading that as uh, 4.962 volts so uh, now I'll hook it up to our component tester here and let's see how in spec it is so it's reading uh, slightly higher um, but you know as far as ballpark figures go it's still okay I mean what person is going to own a component tester like this before they own uh, a multimeter even a cheap one uh, I think there'll be few and far between um, but yeah if you want to use that function it's there so if you found this video useful please give it a like it'd be much appreciated if you have any questions leave them in the comments down below I'll do my best to answer them and also consider subscribing if you haven't already uh, recently I've also started up my Patreon page, so if you like supporting the videos I make, you can uh, do that through Patreon. So thank you very much for watching, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. And why is your eye protection on backwards anyway? Bro, it makes me look cooler. Ugh.